We begin the examination of the gastrointestinal system with a general observation of the patient. For this examination, the patient should be undressed down to their underwear and positioned supine on the examination couch, either horizontal or with the head resting at 45 degrees. Before you go on to close inspection, you should gain an overall impression of the patient's state of health. In fact, observation should have begun from the moment the patient entered your room. For instance, do they look well? Are they panting for breath? Are they pale? Are they overweight or too slim? Do they have a disproportionately large abdomen and slim limbs? And are they very nervous or in an obvious physical discomfort? Begin the formal examination with close inspection of the hands. Examine the nails and nail beds for evidence of clubbing. Finger clubbing is a reduction or loss of angle between the nail and the nail bed. The manifestations and the various causes of clubbing were discussed in the general examination video. Gastrointestinal conditions which may be associated with clubbing include ulcerative colitis, cirrhosis of the liver, Crohn's disease, and cancer. Inspect the palms of the hands for evidence of dubitrans contracture and palmar erythema. These may be signs of liver disease. When inspecting for palmar erythema, look over the thinner and hypothena eminence for abnormally red palms. These are also referred to as liver palms. In dubitrans, the palmar fascia becomes shortened, causing flexion in the fingers. Next, examine the patient's face. Note their general color. Are they pale or anemic looking? Is there any evidence of jaundice? Look for evidence of jaundice in the white part of the eye or the sclera and if severe on the rest of their skin. Are they red or flushed looking? Or are they blue or cyanotic from poor oxygenation? However, cyanosis may be central or peripheral in nature. It is fully discussed in the cardiovascular presentation. Is there any evidence of anemia, B12 or folate deficiency? There may be signs when you observe the patient's face, mucous membranes and the nails. If you suspect B12 deficiency, you should also assess their neurological integrity. Clinical features of anemia include paleness, especially the mucous membranes, coelonychia, smooth tongue, angular stomatitis. In B12 or folate deficiency, the tongue will be smooth or beefsteak-like, and peripheral neuropathy. As part of the examination of the digestive system, also examine the mouth. Check the health of the teeth and gums, the mucous membranes, the tongue and oropharynx. Here are some considerations when examining the mouth. Check for cyanosis or pallor. A dry tongue may signify dehydration. If the tongue is red with white patches, this may be candida a yeast infection. A coated tongue or furred tongue can often indicate intra-abdominal pathology. Inspect the teeth for cavities. Check for gingivitis, receding or bleeding gums. Check for ulcers. Aphthous ulcers may be associated with Crohn's, celiac and ulcerative colitis. Having examined the face and mouth, move on to the inspection of the thorax and abdomen. It is advisable to expose the abdomen down to the groin area. Use a towel or a blanket to preserve the patient's modesty. We now proceed to evaluate the presence of any of the following features and their significance. The distribution of body hair, striae or stretch marks, surgical scars, nodules, swellings, abdominal movement with respiration, peristalsis, dilated veins, spider nevi, pulsations, and hernia. 
spider nevi are surface capillaries or telangiectasis with a large central arteriole from which smaller ones radiate outwards. They are mostly found in the distribution or drainage areas of the superior vena cava, such as the chest wall, shoulders, arms, and the neck. When pressure is applied with a pointed object to the central arteriole, the spider nevus blanches. Also, if a glass is pressed against it, you may be able to observe the arterial pulsations. The findings of more than 2 to 5 spider nevi is considered abnormal. Causes of spider nevi include cirrhosis, usually of alcoholic nature, estrogen excess, associated with chronic liver disease, and more rarely in rheumatoid arthritis. Spider nevi may also be seen transiently in viral hepatitis and in pregnancy, and in this case they will disappear in the last trimester. Look for any lines or stretch marks and try to differentiate them between the purplish-pink striae associated with Cushing's syndrome or simple stretch marks. The appearance of veins over the abdomen is not usual. You may map out the direction of flow by emptying them. Press your index fingers close to each other over a vein and then slowly and firmly move them apart. Then lift one of the fingers to see if the vein fills up. Repeat again and this time lift the other finger to confirm your findings. In normal circulation, the flow is away from the midline, drawn horizontally over the umbilicus. In portal hypertension, the vena flow is radiating away from the umbilicus. In obstructed vena cava, the flow is directed superiorly from the pelvic region. Examine the abdomen for grey Turner's sign. This is a bluish discoloration of the flanks as a result of hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Cullen's sign is also a bluish discoloration of the area around the umbilicus, which may be caused by acidic fluid, which contains some blood. If an area of the abdomen appears enlarged, or you find the mass when you palpate the abdomen later on, think of the five Fs, that is fluid, fetus, feces, flatus, and fat, but also think of tumours. Next, ensure that you assess the patient for evidence of liver disease. Signs and symptoms of liver disease include jaundice, and as we have seen earlier, clubbing, palma erythema, and dubitrans contracture, also parotid gland enlargement, leukonychia, flapping tremor, facial telangiectasia, this is the dilation of surface capillaries, spider nevi, gynecomastia, testicular atrophy, fetal hepaticus, and confusion. Assess the patient for flapping tremor. This is a coarse, involuntary, non-rhythmic flapping motion at the wrists when the hands are outstretched in front of the patient. When checking for flapping tremor, wait for at least 20 to 30 seconds. This tremor commonly results from liver failure. However, it may also be seen in kidney failure and in brain damage due to a metabolic disorder.